Yes. We'll do a couple quick questions for the two of you. Ryan, uh, Donald Davidson, the historian of the Speedway, and I had a private chat, and we both had the same thought on our minds, which was we thought that last year, for a guy who really was in position to win, you were about as gracious as a guy could be to see another driver win. But in the back of your mind, you have to think, was that my shot? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this this is what I've dreamed of since I was a little kid. Um, this is everything that I've worked for. You know, the, the championship is right next to this one, um, and this one's probably on top of that. This is uh, it's amazing. It hasn't yet sunk in, but last year was was very close, like you mentioned, and um, to lose to TK. I mean, he's. I watched the replays this month on ESPN Classic. I watched just about every one of them, and to see how close he's come so many times, and things just happen. That's this race, you know. This guy next to me was one of the quickest, quickest drivers ever to step foot in this place, and uh, just things didn't fall right for him on race day. And like I said, I was I was given the chance with the car to win at the end, being up front. And that's all I can ask for, and we pulled it off. And I couldn't have done it with a greater group of people, that's for sure. And Michael, it was a tremendous day for the team. I mean, I think that's the other thing that you're going to take away. Always good to win, but when you win that way, it's really special. You know, it was amazing when I looked up at the pile on there in the end and to see all our cars right up there in the top six. I mean, just just amazing team effort. I'm just so proud of the whole team. I'm so proud of uh, Ryan and DHL guys. But uh, the other one that really deserves a lot of props, you know, when you think about where they were last year here and uh, how they came back really strong was Honda. They gave us a great engine all month. You know, they really turned it around and uh, we're really proud and happy to be a part of the Honda family now. We've got to get Taylor and Chelsea working both sides of the room. <clears throat> For Ryan and, and Michael, you know, what kept you going before Michael hired you? And Michael, you had a one-off deal. Did you ever, in your mind, when you did that one-off deal to hire him, did you imagine you'd be in victory lane here at the Indy 500? That's crazy. You know, you think that so long ago now. Um, you know, when we looked at Ryan, one of the reasons why we wanted to have him in our family was because, uh, you know, the series, you have to be a very diverse driver. You have to be able to race on all different types of racetracks, including here at Indianapolis. And Ryan was good on all those tracks. And that was one of the things that, uh, the one of the reasons why we went after him and, and we knew he would fit in here. And he, he's, he's been everything we had ever hoped for. And uh, it's just been a, you know, a great relationship. You know, I think we're, we're very close. I think, uh, you know, we just uh, have a, Great relationship, you know, and um, you know we're so happy to have him part of our family. Hopefully, he'll be part of our family till he retires. That would be excellent. And and you know, I remember going back to 2010, having the shot at Andretti Autosport. It was a one-off deal, and I knew this is this is the opportunity of a lifetime right here. You know, I was bouncing from team to team to team to team everywhere, and I I had to make it happen in a short amount of time. But it, you know, it was very pressure-packed circumstances, and. Um, we went on from one. We we won, I think, our second race together at Long Beach, and uh, it's just it's just a fantastic, fantastic story. And you can't do it alone. You know, you need you absolutely you need a team behind you, but you also need people that believe in you. You know, when the days don't go right, and that's this guy over here. So definitely got him to thank for uh, for making my IndyCar career a possibility this way. Ed Hinton, ESPN.com. Uh, oh, too far right, Ryan. Uh, very quickly in the winter circle, you said proud American boy and the crowd roared. Uh, a, can you talk about that part of it, apart from just your individual win, the American boy win? And also, pretty obvious, the drought the last 20 years has been largely due to the drain of the Jeff Gordons and the Tony Stewarts off toward NASCAR. Could you talk about your own focus? Since you were that toddler sitting on the floor watching TV, did you ever waver? And could you talk about your own path into this? And was it completely focused the whole time? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just so proud of this race for more than one reason. But for the reason that I grew up as a fan of the sport, first and foremost. You know, my dad, I, I was lucky enough to go to some IndyCar races. He took me as a kid, and I was just fascinated. And especially with this race, this was the biggest one. This was the this was the granddaddy of them all, and this is where this is where drivers were made, you know, and history is made. And um, to even have a shot at it, just to just come down victory to uh, pit lane, you know, given uh, given these guys five that I looked up to throughout my career, you know, I, I looked up when I was a kid. I looked up to the Andrettis. I looked up to Foyt, you know, and um, the Unser's, Mears. It just it was always 
trying to get there. That's that's that was the top right there. And um, just to have a shot at it like this is, is unbelievable. And uh, being an American boy, you know, I think that uh, when you look at the maybe the NASCAR side of it, it's it's all Americans. This is this is a very international sport, open wheel, and it's the best talent from around the world coming in to to, to do battle on every different type of discipline. Ovals, street circuits, road courses, short ovals. It's the only uh, championship in the world like that. So the Verizon IndyCar Series is, uh, is a true driver's championship. And, and that's what I love most about it. Um, and about winning this, this one here is, is, is definitely a game changer. But I think also I want to add just, you know, being going up against the best in the world and not just in the United States is a big deal. And uh, that's why it feels even more precious when American does win the race because you won on an international field. So, uh, you know, that, that's when you really feel proud. Absolutely. So just a real quick follow to Ryan. Never even a sideways glance at all that money and showbiz and never even a, a glance to the side at that stuff, right? Well, it's... it's you know, I've, I've had the opportunity to do some testing with uh, with Hendrick, and and I got the call up to drive for um, the ethanol car, Bobby Rahal's team, at the same time that I was doing that, and and I switched to IndyCar full time at that point. But uh, no, it was always IndyCar for me. I was I grew up a you know a diehard fan of the sport. Came up in, in karting, um, emulating these guys. Um, you know, right when Michael was at his prime, and it was a one way. It was a one track. Uh, you know, road, and there was, there was no there was no other avenues. It was always this is the top. IndyCar, the Indy 500, having a shot at this race, uh, just being in the field is a privilege, but let alone to be there be there at the end lead. Uh, I have a question for Michael and Ryan. I'm back here in the back. I know you, I know you can hear me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, you, you said last night that you said, I've got the winner standing right here. I just don't know which one it is. Um, you know, I hear, t I hear car owners say that all the time. Why did you feel so strongly and certain, and, and based on the results today, you, you really did know it because all of your cars were right there? I think because, uh, you know, we unloaded really good just like we did last year, and, uh, you know, the big question was how, how is Honda going to stack up against uh, uh, Chevrolet? And when we unloaded and we saw that Honda came here with a great engine, uh, I felt like, you know, there's no reason why we can't repeat on what we did last year. We just had to move up, you know, the, on the podium one more spot, which, uh, which Ryan did. But I, I really felt confident because I felt like we had really good race cars and we had a team that was really ready and prepared to, to do battle. And, and I think it shows, you know, if, uh, if Hinch doesn't do his thing, we might have had, you know, uh, five right up in the top six. So, uh, you know, it, it just, uh, I had a great feeling because we have a great team and we were really well prepared. And for Ryan, I heard you say on the radio at Townsend Bell's caution, you said, I can't catch a break. And it, it looked like this was going to be hard, you know, hard, and maybe you're going to be the leader again and, and lose it like you did last year. You sort of had a career that's gone like that. You have bad breaks at the wrong time. Did you ever think that, uh, you know, the Indy 500, maybe like Canaan, would never happen for you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, especially when you look at Michael's career, too. Just ex exactly like that. You know, he, he, he ran so strong for so many races. And, just never felt his way. And when that thing came out, the reason why I thought that was because you don't want to be the leader on a yellow, right? So I was like, please, just go green. We were, we're catching lap traffic. Let's just go green the rest of this thing. I was really looking forward to that. We had a great race car, but uh, yeah, it went, it went yellow and then it went red. And we were sitting in the pit lane, you know, we had time to think about everything and here I am the leader again. So did my best not to, uh, not to do what we did last year, which is which is lead uh, at the wrong time. And I told him it was a good omen because last time we we sat under the red flag, uh, we won the championship. So I uh, just yeah, keep true. that in mind. Twenty twelve, I'll tell you. Uh, uh, Michael, you, Michael, you were talking. Sorry, straight up. You, you, you were talking about the, the importance of American drivers, and certainly we, we all understand your connection to that. But this is the first time an American has won since '06 when Cornish won, and in both instances. Your, your son, Marco, was, was factor late. Is, it, is there some disappointment there while you're... Yeah, I mean, you know, as a dad, you want him to be up here, you know. I, uh, I can't lie, you know. It just would have been so special. But, you know, it's special having Ryan here. But, you know, when it's your kid, it's a, it's a different thing. But uh, as an owner, I couldn't be happier with what we had. And, uh, you know, Marco gave it a heck of a shot. Uh, unfortunately, his car just wasn't quick enough there in the end. But he drove a really, really good race as... Seems like he always does here. He's he's one of the best drivers I've ever seen around this place. Definitely. Bruce Martin, FoxSports.com. A question and then a follow-up. Um, 
you couldn't have had that battle unless it had been with a clean driver. Mm -hmm. How important was that? I mean, how much did you think that, you know, we can race this all the way to the end without a crash? It's a very good point, Bruce. Um, the, the fact that I was racing Alio and Marco, I knew there was going to be no funny business. We were going to race each other hard. We were going to take our line and stick to it. But there wasn't going to be some unexpected move at the wrong time or something sketchy. Uh, racing those guys was great. Marco and I went, went really close there going into turn three, but I knew we had, uh, yeah, I knew we respect each other a lot on the track. And, um, it was good, close racing. And, and I, knew, I knew last night before I went to bed, I was going to have to battle one of my teammates to win this thing to get through them. And uh, sure enough, we had, we had probably the strongest cars out there. So it was close racing, but uh, all fair. And the follow-up, at any time did you think, maybe I took the lead a little too soon? Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And especially when Elio got by me, I thought that might have been it. Because as you can see, we started running low out of the corner, you know, at, at a two and at a four. And it was going to be the long way around to make a win. And I thought when Elio got by that I made a mistake, that that might be it. But my final move, I faked to the top and came back down and cut a little grass for IMS. But... We made it happen. I think that was a move that actually won the race. I think that caught Elio completely off guard and it just threw off the rest of his plan for, for the rest of the race. And I think that was the move that did it. A question for Michael. Uh, over here. Uh, Mr. Michael, a uh, couple of years ago, the uh, big discussion over in Europe in F1 was team orders. Actually, it was fine. The following scenario, going to the last race in Fontana this year, Ryan is leading the championship. He's under attack by other drivers of your team. What will be your decision? What will be? I'm sorry, I didn't understand. What will be your decision? When he's leading the championship, last race in Fontana and all this stuff. Yeah. And uh, um, he's under attack by uh, drivers of your team. Do you make any decision? You say it's a championship? Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying, like, because are there team orders or whatever? Yes. Uh, um, you know, we, we don't know. I mean, that's that's a long way down the road, and hopefully, uh, you know, whichever one one of our cars is going for the championship, we won't, you know, even have to think about that. But um, I don't really like taking away wins away from anybody, you know. So if, uh, but uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, that's 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 something not even worth talking about right now. Me, Brian, Tim May, uh, Columbus Dispatch. When you make that move down the back straight, you almost cut the grass. <clears throat> Are you aware of what you're doing? And, and uh, as Al Unser Jr. once said, you just go for it. You know, you're not, you're in another yeah. land, so to speak. Just talk about, as you look back on that, just what a dairy move it was. And kind of yeah, was I mean, you definitely know what you're doing. At least you hope you do. I was going with, with instinct mostly. But uh, there is a large part of that. There's an aspect of just going for it because it's the Indy 500. Second doesn't really count. So, you know, it, it, it in my head, I was going going for it. I was going to make it try and happen, or maybe I was going to get uh, push off of three and get in the wall or something like that. But I was going to be in the gray. I was going to do anything I could to win this race. And uh, luckily, that was that was enough to make it happen, and, and we held off uh, some really strong cars behind us. Uh, Gordon Kirby, Motorsport Magazine. Uh, congratulations, Ryan. Thank you. Great to see you after all these years up here. <coughs> um, qualifying didn't really work out the way you wanted it. You had to start back there in, in the ruck in 19th. You made tremendous progress. You got up in the top 12. Uh, what did you have to do in terms of the setup, and running back in the ruck? Did you have to do any kind of compromise of might not being best? Was the car uh, not the best at the end when you were at open air? Just tell us how all of that worked out for you, Ryan. Please. Yeah, we've had a great car in traffic all month. I, I didn't want to really overhype it because this place is pretty tricky. You come out one day and you're really happy with the car. The next day the wind shifts a couple degrees and, and all of a sudden your car just uh, went in the basket. So I didn't want to talk about it too much, but I've, I've had a great car all month, and uh, especially on, on the last practice on car day. I was really happy with the car. And uh, we made a couple... A couple changes before the race because we were starting so far back in the pack, but we had a really good start, kind of settled in, and from there just picked them off one by one and made made the right adjustments through the race. I mean, to to, to win this race, you have to do everything perfect, and uh, you know the guys just did the perfect changes on it every time. It was the right one, just what I needed, and that's what it takes really to win the Indy 500. And here we are. Couldn't be more proud. Hey Ryan, uh, I'm sure you've dreamed of this moment all your life, probably even rehearsed it a little bit. Uh, you're only an hour or so into this, but I'm curious what you expected this moment to be like or the last hour or so, and how does reality match that? You know, on the, on, the, on the bricks there, when we were kissing the bricks, and I looked up, and 
that's when it kind of sank, sank in. I got that, that feeling like tears were going to come. And it still hasn't got me. I'm still kind of coming down off the adrenaline rush of a really close fought race at the end. Um, but you're, you've worked so long for it. It was, it, you know, just like the winning the championship. You've worked so hard all season long to try and get there. Your whole career, when it happens, it takes a little bit to set in because you've worked so hard for it. And uh, and here we are. I, I can't even believe it. I'm, I'm sure, you know, tonight when I'm sitting by myself, that's when it's really going to hit me. But uh, kissing the bricks, seeing that trophy, drinking milk, it's all helping. It's all helping to make it all reality. And uh, sitting up here with Michael talking to all of you is just uh, just fantastic. First of all, congratulations. Sorry, the question from here. Uh, secondly, uh, if it's not a secret, uh, may we know the last exchange of words, the last conversation before the finish? Uh, probably Michael gives some instruction to you, or what was the conversation and when was the conversation? Uh, Michael just said, go win it. You know, you, you got the best car, the best driver out there, go win it. Um, that's what, you know, my engineer said the same thing. He said, you know, we've, we've got the tool to do it. Let's, let's go make it happen. And I knew sitting at that red flag, I said, you have, you have the best chance to win this thing right now. And if you don't, uh, you came up short. So I was pretty hard on myself at that point and, and, and knew we had to pull it out. Luckily, um, luck, luckily, like I said, it was good, clean racing. Stage right. Uh, congrats on the win. Thank you. In Helio's press conference, he said that he thought he might be able to make a move coming off turn four. Uh, just take me through that last lap that was going through your mind. Just that last turn, excuse that exactly, just to kind of narrow it down for you. Yeah, we made the pass, like I said, with two to go, which dropped Elio back a bit because we, we really fought into the corner, which made him lose a bit of momentum. Uh, but on the last lap, I was worried that he would be able to come out and draft up and pass me, just like Horners did to uh, Marco in 2006. <clears throat> that was playing in my mind going down the back straight for sure. But I just had to be aggressive. I had to come off of turn four low so that Marco or so that uh, Elio couldn't couldn't draft up as well. I think that was the difference. Had I come off high, he'd have been right in my right in my uh, slipstream and probably have gone by. But as, as expected, this race was ridiculously close and competitive, and um, just glad I picked the right time to go. Michael, uh, Don Taylor, the Sport Radio. As the race was coming down to the end, uh, they, they played the, the communication between you and Ryan, and you said, you know, let's go, we're going to win this race. You know, now your son has a shot at it. Yeah. Is it hard to push your driver when your son is has a good chance. Well, you know, like, so yeah, it's a, it's a weird thing, you know, I'm secretly watching him and like saying, come on, get up there and, you know, if you can pass him, do it. But I, I knew at that point in the race, though, because I, I, there was a few times when, when Marco tried to get up there, but I saw his car didn't have the, the speed. I think he was running too much downforce there. And I think, uh, you know, that was a difference with Ryan's car to his. You know, I think they were both really good, but I think, uh, you know, his was a little more trimmed and we had a little more speed. and. And that was a difference. So I knew at that point that, you know, if we were going to win it, it would most likely be with the uh, line. Second question is, uh, you won now as an owner three times. You came as close as anybody to winning it, led more laps than anybody. Is the win as an owner as good as it would have been if you held the board warmer? You know, it, it's, I always get asked that question. It's a great, great feeling, but I, you know, probably if I would have won it as a driver, I think it'd be a definitely different feeling because, you know, you always feel that, you know, that, geez, I wish I could have at least won, you know, but, um, but still, I mean, I don't, I don't dwell on those things because I've been the luckiest guy in the world and I had a great career and, and I feel like I'm so lucky to be able to stay in the sport I love in another capacity and, and, uh, and uh, so, you know, I have no regrets and, you know, it, it was just a great feeling to have, you know, Ryan win because there you're sharing it and with because it's a total team effort and it's your team and, and it's your guys and, you know, and then when you look up, like I said, when I looked up at the the pylon and to see all our cars right up there in the top six, uh, you know, that was that was great. And then, you know, even Kurt, you know, to be up there in the top six for a great race. So it was uh, 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 just couldn't have been a better day. Uh, Ryan, Dick Whitman, I'm an old timer. <laughs> what will you tell your son when he's old enough to understand about what you accomplished today? You know, I'll, I'll certainly tell him. Um, you know, the, I'll explain the road to get there and how much hard work and sacrifice it took. But uh, really, he was there with us, and, and he had, you know, he he was there during Father's Day for the for our win in Milwaukee, and uh, he was he was here for the 500, and just having those memories captured, you know, watching the video with him, I can't wait to do that. And um, 
you know, all the pictures that we have will certainly go on the walls of our, of our home for forever. But uh, there's a lot of lessons in racing. It's a lot like business, life in general. There's a lot of lessons in how, how we sit here today, and, and I'll sure, certainly share that with them. I don't know if I want them to be a racing driver. Don't, don't, do <laughs> don't do it. Trust me, don't do it. Don't yeah. let that happen. Yeah, Michael's advised me not to buy a go-kart. <laughs> so, I don't know, maybe we'll get him a set of golf clubs for yeah, Christmas. <laughs> Michael, I don't know if you've had a chance to talk to Marco, but you've not. Just, uh, you know, told him good job, and I could tell he was really upset, you know, which I don't blame him. I know the feeling, so. So that, that was what I was going to get, and I imagine he's very disappointed. How do you temper that? You're very excited. Your team has won, and you know how do you deal with, with it's your a very weird emotions? feeling. Yeah, it's, I mean, because I really was disappointed for him because I know you only get that many shots, and you know he had a car that was close, but just not close enough. And but yet I'm so happy and proud of the rest of the the team, and so it's a it's a weird feeling. So as a dad, disappointment. As a team owner, couldn't be happier. You know, so you have to try to balance those things. Will you have to be ropey when you're around him? Yeah, I know he gets he gets a little ticked off when I'm too happy to be sure every time. <laughs> Rightfully so. I couldn't imagine, you know, with my little guy out there just being a dad, I can see it now. It's the underlying, yeah, for sure. Stephanie Walcroft from Star. Michael, am I correct in sensing some over here? Some yeah. frustration in uh, James not joining the rest of your team in the top No, uh, I mean I'm not frustrated. I mean he was going for it. I think he probably is a little over I don't know. Not about patience. This. Yeah, there you go. Not, he didn't learn all the way. We're going to get him back. Rookie move. Yeah, yeah. Rookie move. Yeah. I'll play with him. James is a great friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. No, he, hey, he's going for it. He's in the 500. And, uh, you know, had he pulled that move off, he's he's in a position to win the race. And so, and I think he felt if he didn't pull it off, he probably wasn't going to be because those two cars were going to be difficult to pass. But, you know, I, but I think, you know, watching it, he's going to be like, geez, I shouldn't have done that, you know. But uh, it was, uh, yeah, it would have been nice to have him up there for sure. Because, but, you know, unfortunately, you know, I can't be greedy either. I mean, you know, we had four, car, or four cars up there and uh, uh, would have loved to see him up there with the UFD guys and the UFD car. But, uh, you know, I can't complain. Here in the back for Ryan. Um, you've won your championship now. You've won the Indy 500. You hear drivers say all the time that they want to win the 500 first. Uh, so why why is that? And when your career is over, do you think you will place this higher than your championship? Um, when it comes to a pure driving perspective, right? Um, I think one has to go with the other. But when you when you know when you've won an Indy Car Championship, you know you've messed, you you've done your best, better than some of the best in the world at every different discipline. And there's something from a driver's perspective that is so rewarding about that, um, that you really can't put a figure on, you can't really, you can't explain it unless you're a driver going in every weekend and fighting all these guys. You know, the competition in the Rising Indy Car Series, like I said, is, is just ridiculous. It's, it's probably the toughest it's ever been, and the closest it's ever been. Um, so there's a certain, it's different for sure. This is, this is the history of auto racing. This is, this is the biggest event in the world, the biggest single day sporting event in the world. It's the biggest race in the world. It's the one that everybody wants to aim for and shoot for. Um, so they're very different. So in some ways, the Indy 500 absolutely will be will be held on the pedestal. I'll wear the ring with pride for sure. Can't wait for that. It's um, it's unbelievable now that you mentioned that we won we won both of those. But a lot to do in IndyCar still. A lot to do in the career, and they're they're so totally different. But this is um, this one's probably the tops. Absolutely. Daniel McFadden from the National Sports Journalism Center. Uh, Ryan, how much was a, a conscious decision to m get past Helio, Helio before the white flag? And also, how different was the, the PAC draft this year compared to last year? Uh, I think the PAC draft was very similar. The, uh, the drafting and the slipstream, the toe going on was, was very similar, but it was hotter this year. So handling came more into play. There was cars sliding around, and you can see it. It was tough to get a uh, draft up on somebody and make a pass. Um, so it's very tight racing, the whole race, uh, <coughs> mentally draining for sure because you had to put the car, you had to use every inch of racetrack and I felt like a few times I got too close to errors, too close to mistakes, but that's where you had to run it in order to move forward. Um, but at the end with Elio, no, I was just, 
I knew how hard it was to pass, right? It wasn't as easy as last year where you just go right around and the next guy comes right around. It was much more difficult. So I knew if I had a shot at him, I had to take it and then make it difficult for him from there. Um, Ryan uh, and Michael, um, Mark Reed, uh, talk to us about through those 10 minutes of the red flag when you're sitting in your car, your adrenaline's up there, it goes down, it has to go up again. Michael, as a car owner, talk about the red flag versus a green-white finish here at Indy. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was a tough one, you know, because I was just thinking, oh, here we go, because, you know, it's the first time it's happened in 98 years, and it's like, now, because it's the first time it happened in 98 years, is it going to work out wrong for us, you know? Um, so I was a little disappointed at that point, but I understand why they did it, because it is all about the fans still, and in the end, it really worked out well. I'm glad he threw the, uh, the, the red when there was still six or seven laps to go, and not just one or two laps to go, because... Then it would have been just like last year, and then you know we would have been in the wrong position. So I think there was enough rate, time for racing still. So, um, but it was uh, yeah, it was a, a, a frustrating time for us at that point as a competitor. But uh, having said that, understood why it was done. Yeah, it was it was tough to, to deal with the red flag, but um, you know I was just sitting there in the car thinking, you know we've got a great shot at it, and you just have to keep your head about you. And I wanted so badly to win at that point. You know we've got all the we got all the support in the world from, from, from DHL and everybody's here and it was just going to be uh, it's going to be awesome. But how much they believe in me as well, you know, it's not just the team, but it's uh, what they've done for me in my career is, uh, is massive as well. So really wanted to win for them and I think the, uh, the DHL Honda looked, looked great out front, that, the yellow car out front. So knew I had to keep it there somehow. It hit the ESPN a lot better than another yellow car. <laughs> Ed Hinton, ESPN.com again. Uh, Ryan, you talk about feeling like you had the best shot during the red, but it seemed, to the layman anyways, that, I don't know, go back to, to the last 50 laps or whatever, you sure appeared to have a car that was so strong and you with it that all the the tech rules that have been built into this series to make a great show for the fans and everything like that, regardless of who was passing whom, and Marco had said all of that about where are you going to be at the end of this race, that was his nightmare, all of those things. You appeared to have a car that was so strong that it could sort of it give you half a straightaway or whatever, and it could overcome all of this technology that's built into a great show. Did you feel that you had a car that that uh, you didn't have to worry like Marco did that that uh, that where you right. be? No, I don't I think I, I think we had a great car, uh, for sure. It was one that uh, could win the race and it did, but um, no we had a big lead at one point when we were dealing with traffic and pit stops, those two combined, I put a lot of cars between us. We had like a four second lead at one point and they just ate it right up. They came up, drafted right up to us. So no, it wasn't anything that was going to be pulling away. But it, I knew that if I got into a fight with somebody, that I had uh, I had the upper hand for sure. And, and given that, given a driver that confidence going into the going into that fight in the last few laps is um, that's awesome. So the car was doing everything I needed it to, could put it right where I needed to uh, to to win the race. And thank God we did because I'd be so I'd be so down about uh, losing with that car today. I believe we've got three left queued up, and that's where we're going to stop it. These guys are going to be doing this a lot for a while, so we'll let them go. Uh, Bruce Martin, FoxSports.com. Uh, how surprised were both of you at the pace of the race, the first 150 laps, green flag and racing? Was, and, and were you fearful race. that, you know, we've run green flags so much, there may be a lot of yellows at the end? I, I Yeah, that's what we were talking about. We're like, you know, this thing's going to this has a possibility of going all the way to the end. And, uh, but we also knew that once the yellow does come out, then it's going to breed more yellows. And, uh, and that's exactly what happened because when it came that late in the race, then there was no more sitting back and waiting. Everybody had to go. Um, I think the first part of the race, everybody was just sitting back. Nobody really wanted to lead. They just wanted to you know, get to the end. And so there was no aggressiveness in, in the field. But you could see as it was building, getting there closer to the end, that you, know, you felt like something might happen. But, but he also knew that, well, if it didn't, actually there was a point where we felt if it didn't, one, if he didn't get that stop and go penalty, or that the drive-through penalty, he was probably going to win the race because 
he had done it enough that he was going to have to do one less pit stop than us. But um, so we were, yeah. So we were. A little, we didn't want to tell you that. <laughs> so uh, so when he had that happen, then we were like, okay, now we know we're only racing really three cars there in the end. And uh, um, but uh, yeah. Ryan, do you want to talk about the pace? Yeah, the pace was uh, amazing, just going green that long, and, and I was thrilled with the pace of our car, just picking through them, and, and the leaders kept getting closer and closer. So this is this is great. I just wanted to go green because it was it was fun. You get into a racing rhythm, and the ins and out laps and pit lane, that's that's a really, uh, that's a fun part about it too, trying to maximize that, and I, I loved it going green that long. I was hoping we were going to have the fastest Diddy 500 in history, but I think the red kind of put the kibosh on that, right? And, yeah. Ryan in the back here. When Hilliard was in here, he, he talked about the, the difference between bravery and stupid uh, regarding the duel toward the end. How close do you think you got to that line? <laughs> um, I was just going for it. I don't think it really went on either side. You're brave. You're brave to be out there fighting it out, I think, anyway. Um, brave hanging one of these Indy cars out in the traffic was, is definitely uh, pretty nuts for when you really consider what, what all goes into it. but. No, I mean, I, you, you know how you can race guys, certain people, and, and I had some great drivers around me, so I knew it was going to be good, clean racing, but it was going to be hard, and I think we made the right move at the right time, for sure. So I don't, I don't think uh, went to bravery or, or any of that. Patrick Reynolds, Motor Week Live. Question for Michael. With Kurt Busch's sixth place finish today, uh, I'd like to know your reaction of the job he did all day long, and did you get a chance to talk to Kurt before he left the track to go to Charlotte? I just saw him real quick and said, you know, so proud to have him with us this month, and uh, hats off to him, you know, he, he did a really good job. He came in here with the right mindset, um, you know, he, uh, he came in with, you know, a lot of experience, but still coming in with the mindset of a rookie, like I said, and, and uh, went to school and was a great student. And you can tell the way he ran the first part of the race, he felt back, but you could tell how he was learning what was going on. And then he started, when he started feeling confident, he started picking him off again. And, uh, you know, he told me there in the end, well, I think we had a car capable of better, but, you know, he had a rookie driver. I'm like, no, you did, you did a good job. You have nothing, you know, to be ashamed of. You, you did a great month, the whole month. And, uh, you know, it was really a pleasure having him on our team. And uh, I think everybody on the team really liked had them on, and uh, you know, maybe we'll do it again sometime. Michael is a car owner and as a father. Congratulations! Thank you. And uh, Ryan, congratulations! I'm going to tell you. Thank you. And we'll talk to you down the road because those images of your family on the Art of Bricks will be iconic images here. I trust you. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you, you so everybody. Much. Thank you.